Windows 8, the operating system that marked a major transition for Microsoft. I'm sure that for some of you watching this video, hearing that name alone makes you think of one of your least favorite releases of Windows. But perhaps some of you didn't really mind Windows 8 that much. However you feel about it, you can't deny that this operating system, released in 2012, brought a completely new approach to Windows, and in many ways was another building block to achieve Microsoft's vision set out by Bill Gates in the early 1980s. A computer on every desk and in every home, running Microsoft software. Of course, by the time Microsoft released Windows 8, the company already had a huge majority in the desktop computer space, but Microsoft wanted to expand this reach into other areas of consumer electronics, areas where the company's market share was lacking. I'm sure that all of us know the big changes made in Windows 8, how it had a huge focus on touch, and how it was the first mainstream Windows version to add support for ARM-based devices. But how exactly did Microsoft move from the more traditional desktop environment in Windows 7 to the radically new redesigned start screen and Metro UI in Windows 8? And how were they able to accomplish this major transition in just three years? In today's video, we're going to be exploring the development process that eventually led to the creation of Windows 8. I'll be taking you through four unique builds of the operating system that were compiled during different stages of the development process, and discussing some of the major changes that occurred between these builds up until Windows 8's release to manufacturing in August of 2012. Believe it or not, the development process for what would eventually become Windows 8 began even before Windows 7 was released in 2009. Windows 7 would go on to be one of the most successful Windows releases of all time, and because of that, Microsoft had some big shoes to fill with their next major release of the OS. From the very beginning, Microsoft wanted to design this version of Windows to be able to run on tablets. But this was not the first time that the company created a Windows release aimed at tablet computers. Windows 7 did include a few tablet-oriented features, and Windows XP even had an entire dedicated release known as Tablet PC Edition, which I did a video on here. What made this next release of Windows different was revealed at the 2011 Consumer Electronics Show. Microsoft officially announced that the next version of Windows would be able to run on ARM-based devices, in addition to the x86 architecture that had been used for years prior and would be continued to be used in the future. Then Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer expanded on Bill Gates' original vision, saying that Windows PCs will continue to adapt and evolve, and Windows will be everywhere on every kind of device without compromise. Of course, Ballmer was referring to touchscreen tablet computers, which had become increasingly more popular ever since the release of the iPad in 2010. Microsoft wanted to capitalize on this market, and to do that, they had to create a version of Windows to run on these devices. But instead of creating a small, limited version of Windows, like in the case of Windows CE, this time around, Microsoft built touchscreen support right into their flagship release of Windows, and in a big way. Although the resulting version of Windows designed for ARM devices was known as Windows RT, it was visually identical to Windows 8, and all of the tablet-oriented user interfaces were consistent across both versions. The versions differed in their ability to run applications. As Windows RT was designed for machines using ARM-based processors, it could not run any standard Windows applications and was limited to apps in the Windows Store. I'm sure we all know about the massive changes in Windows 8, the most notable being with the Start menu, which was removed entirely in favor of the new Start screen. But it wouldn't be until 2011 when Microsoft officially announced this new interface to the public. Before that time, Microsoft developers were working hard to enable the new Windows version to run on ARM-based devices. 
A screenshot of an early build of Windows 8 running on an ARM-based device was revealed in an official Microsoft blog post on February 9th, 2012. In it, one of the developers discusses the development process behind getting Windows to run on ARM devices. In the screenshot, we can see the device running a few standard Windows applications, including Task Manager, Command Prompt, the on-screen keyboard, and even Solitaire, albeit an older version. As with any Windows development process, the first few pre-Milestone 1 builds largely resemble Windows 7 and even still identify themselves as Windows 7 in the version string. The first known build to include more visual changes was build 7850. This was a Milestone 1 build of Windows 8 that was compiled on September 22nd, 2010. The setup process for this build remained unchanged and looked identical to Windows 7's setup process. When you log into the system for the first time, however, you'll start to notice some major changes. The big giveaway that this is a confidential development build of Windows and not Windows 7 can be seen in the Let's Not Leak Our Hard Work desktop wallpaper. This wallpaper still displays the name Harmony in the personalization settings, meaning that Microsoft simply replaced the default Windows 7 wallpaper file with this one. Additionally, the message at the bottom right warns the user, in this case Microsoft employees and contingent staff, that they could lose their job or have their contract terminated if they disclose this build to someone without the proper authorization. Underneath that warning message, we can see that the system is identifying itself as Windows 7 build 7850. This can also be seen by running Winver, where the system still identifies its NT version as 6.1, which is Windows 7's NT version. A new user interface element introduced in this build is the user icon seen in the bottom right of the system tray. When clicked, a small menu will pop up and display options to change user settings and options to log off and shut down the computer. Another change can be seen by opening up most windows, where you'll notice that the title bar text has been centered. Fun fact, centered title bar text was last utilized in Windows 3.1 before being reintroduced in Windows 8. The version of Internet Explorer included with this build of the OS is a beta release of IE9, which was still in development at this time. On the surface, it looks like that these are the only major changes in this build, but there are actually a lot of additional features that can be enabled by adding keys to the Windows registry. There are even two very early versions of modern UI applications, a PDF reader and a webcam capture program. The PDF reader opens up in a window, just like a normal Windows application. However, when you open up a PDF file, there are no buttons or scroll bars, and the only way you can scroll through the PDF is by dragging your mouse anywhere on the screen, signifying that this was probably intended to be used on a multi-touch surface. The same can be said about the webcam application. This one opens up in full screen, just like a modern UI app does in Windows 8. There are buttons, but they are much larger and definitely intended for use on a touchscreen. You can also use the registry to enable the ribbon UI in Windows Explorer. It is not fully complete, however, as there are a lot of placeholder icons, but the buttons do perform their respective actions. Another application that can be enabled is the experimental version of the more detailed task manager that would later be introduced in Windows 8. In this build, it's called the Modern Windows Task Manager to distinguish itself from the regular NT task manager that is still used. You can even see some remnants of Windows Explorer used on the top bar. The Change View button does not do anything when clicked, but the Help button does open up Windows Help and Support. However, the only content is a message from the developers stating that this application is undergoing a major reconstruction and that navigating to help documentation is expected to fail. There is also some placeholder text in the search box saying that it will be functional after Milestone 2. This build also contains some experimental new user interfaces, including an early version of the start screen. However, these features are restricted by Microsoft's Red Pill licensing system. Essentially, Red Pill was a way for Microsoft to limit access to certain features in the event of a leaked build. Red Pill restricted features could only be enabled by using a Microsoft created tool that was stored on an internal server and still remains unleaked to the public. However, a couple of clever developers were able to create programs that attempted to enable these restricted features. The latest one, called Redlock, was actually released earlier this year. 
The tool makes it very easy to enable these hidden features. After Redlock runs and reboots your system, you will see a very, very early implementation of the start screen when you log back in. Just like in the final release of Windows 8, this screen completely replaces the regular start menu. While it's opened up, the taskbar and start button completely change, and there's also an early version of the Windows Snap interface upon closing the menu. As for functionality, the UI works exactly as you'd expect. You can launch programs from the menu and even search for them by clicking on the icon in the top right or just by typing at any moment. What you can't do is move the application tiles around or resize them. You can scroll through the UI using the scroll bar at the bottom or by simply clicking and dragging your mouse on any area of the screen similar to the PDF program. This once again signifies that this interface was designed for use on a touchscreen. Another UI element enabled with Redlock is the Charms menu. By pressing Windows key and C at the same time on your keyboard, you will open up a very experimental version of the Charms interface. It's in the exact same place as the final version, but there are no animations and none of the buttons are functional. Our next build to take a look at is 7927. This is a Milestone 2 development build that was compiled on February 14th, 2011, meaning that about 5 months have passed since 7850 was compiled. The initial setup process is exactly the same as the previous build. It still identifies itself as Windows 7, however this build was based on the ultimate SKU as opposed to the last build which was based on Windows 7 Enterprise. You don't have to wait until you get to the desktop to notice changes though, as that happens right after Windows finishes the first portion of the setup. On the next screen, you'll see that the words Microsoft Confidential have replaced the Windows 7 logo, which has also been entirely removed from the login screen. When you log in, you'll be presented with a new crossword wallpaper, which again has taken the place of Windows 7's default one. We still have the standard Windows 7 taskbar and start menu, along with the small menu in the system tray introduced in the last build. Most of the references to Windows 7, including the desktop and in Winver, now display Microsoft pre-release operating system. The Microsoft Confidential text once again replaces the Windows 7 logo in Winver, and the NT version is now 6.2, which was Windows 8's NT version. One of the new programs introduced in this build is the Microsoft Help program. This opens up in full screen and attempts to load a web page which is unsuccessful. By running Redlock, we can once again get access to the restricted features. Upon logging back in, the new start screen will appear which has been substantially updated. It also replaces the start menu, just like in the last build. Tiles now have different colors, and there's also a new desktop tile which displays a preview of the Windows desktop. This tile can be resized as well. If you click on the user icon at the top right, an early version of the modern UI settings will open up. This interface is not fully functional yet, but there are a couple of settings that can be changed. There's even a Devices tab which acts similarly to the Device Manager. One thing you cannot do is pin items to the start screen like you normally would. The item will appear to have pinned, but it will not show on the start screen. If you browse around in Explorer, you will also notice that the default folder icon has been changed to a more flat icon. This icon did not appear in the final build of Windows 8 though. Since you cannot access all of your programs from the start screen, Microsoft implemented a special folder that can be created which shows all of the applications on your system. Red Pill also enabled access to the new out-of-box experience interface. These prompts would be displayed to the user right after they finish installing Windows and before they log into their account for the first time. The logon screen has been overhauled as well to match the design of the start screen. You can even enable an early version of the lock screen by requiring users to press Ctrl-Alt-Delete before logging in. This screen displays a large background as well as the time and date. We can also take a look at the webcam program, which has been substantially updated since the last build. There is a new background as well as some more configuration options. Once you launch this program, it will automatically pin itself to the start screen. This build also contains an early but non-functional implementation of the Reset This PC feature that was introduced with Windows 8. The Windows 7-like wizard will launch, but it will fail when it cannot find the necessary files. An interesting note is that this tool actually asks you for a Windows 8 installation disk. 
being one of the only programs that I could find that specifically mentions Windows 8 by name. Inserting this build's install disk gave us the same result, but doing so opened up the new, flatter auto run menu. The control alt delete screen has been revamped as well, with a noticeably larger font size. Task Manager has also been improved on and looks a bit more feature complete, although the hardware utilization information is contained in a separate window. Build 7989 is a Milestone 3 build that was compiled on April 21st, 2011. About two months have passed since 7927 was compiled. Like the previous two builds, this one looks identical to Windows 7 during the initial installation process. However, when the OS finishes copying files and reboots, we will be greeted with a brand new boot screen that features the spinning dots animation. The welcome text beneath the dots was removed for the final release, and the beta fish was obviously a placeholder image. Once it boots, we will see the same Microsoft Confidential screen and Windows 7-like out-of-box experience. At first glance, it does not look like much has changed since the last build. Sure, there's a new desktop background and modified tablet PC input panel, but the system still largely resembles Windows 7. This is once again due to Microsoft's red pill restrictions. By running Redlock and rebooting the system, you'll see some major things change. The new start screen has the ability to move app tiles around, and from a layout standpoint, looks very similar to the final release. Even the right-click context menu looks similar to Windows 8. Although the user icon at the top right does not display shutdown options, but instead opens up the Metro control panel. This interface has more tabs and settings that can be modified compared to the previous build. You still cannot pin items to the start screen though. Redlock also enables the new desktop theme. You can see that the arrow interface has been modified and the window controls have been slightly changed. The charms menu got an overhaul as well, and actually works this time. There's even a flyout search menu that is fully functional. It's also worth noting that the animations are much more fluid when switching between the start screen and the desktop. After Milestone 3 came the pre-developer preview phase, which ultimately led to the public release of Windows 8 Developer Preview. Before that happened though, Microsoft developers compiled Build 8056 on July 27th, 2011, three months after 7989 was compiled. The setup process has been slightly redesigned, with all references to Windows 7 being removed. The logo at the beginning simply says Windows, and the EULA identifies the OS as a Microsoft pre-release Windows client. The background has also been changed to a solid blue color, presumably used as a placeholder. Everything about the boot screen is identical to what we saw in the previous build. When the system loads the next phase of the setup, you'll notice a couple of differences. The Microsoft Confidential text has been changed to say Windows Developer Preview, and the background appears to be displaying incorrectly. Part of it looks to be a black and white version of the Windows 7 setup background, while the other part is simply a solid black color. The logon screen looks very Windows 7-like, however the logo at the bottom, which in previous builds had been missing, now says Windows Developer Preview. There are also some slight changes in the logon messages. For example, preparing your desktop now says preparing your PC. The desktop background has been changed as well, this being another variant of the crossword internal wallpaper. The confidential message is still present along with the version string on the desktop, also identifying itself as simply Windows Developer Preview. You're going to notice right away that many of the features and UI elements in this build are close to being just like they were in the public developer preview release. Although the desktop still resembles Windows 7 with the same taskbar and start button, the start screen that is enabled by running Redlock looks much more finalized. There are some differences with the tile icons for certain applications like the Microsoft Store and Remote Desktop though, which would have different icons upon Windows 8's release. The animations when navigating around the interface are also much smoother. You're also able to search for applications and files using the Search Flyout interface, and the Modern UI Settings program has more options accessible than in the previous build. Redlock also enables access to the Charms menu, which again looks very close to the final release. Even the time and date are present in the lower left. 
The only real difference in design between the two versions of the Charms menu is the Windows logo displayed on the Start button. You can also hover over the traditional Start button at the bottom left to get quick access to a few menus and get the same time and date displayed, this time just off to the right side. Two months after Build 8056 was compiled, Microsoft released the first publicly available build of Windows 8 at their 2011 Build Conference. This release was known simply as the Windows Developer Preview. Despite the name, this build could be downloaded by anyone for free on Microsoft's website. The company claims that in just 12 hours, there were over half a million downloads of the developer preview. This was significant because it was the first time that the general public could get access to what would eventually become the next release of Windows exposing them to the new start screen and modern UI interface. The developer preview itself still resembles Windows 7 in a couple of places, mainly on the desktop. Aeroglass transparency was still present, along with the start button, albeit with a newer design. Both of these elements would be removed in the final release of Windows 8, but 8.1 would bring the start button back. There would be two more preview releases of Windows 8, the consumer preview in February and the release preview in May, until Windows 8 would be officially released to manufacturing on August 1st, 2012. So guys, that is a retrospective look back at the development process that eventually led to the creation of Windows 8. I really enjoyed making this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to get subscribed and turn on those channel notifications so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times per week on this channel. If you guys have any comments or questions for me, be sure to drop those down below. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support here on the channel. And I will see you all in the next video.